Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Last night, we had the debut launch of the Firefly Alpha rocket, and this is a launch vehicle I've been waiting for for quite a while. I think Firefly Space Systems formed back in something like 2014. It's a US company with a lot of people in Ukraine, and it actually went out of business and then was reborn as Firefly Aerospace, and that's what brought us to this day when we actually see the vehicle launch. It's a small sat launch vehicle. It's about 29 meters tall, supposedly able to put one ton into low earth orbit based, you know, obviously doing the math, uh, which makes it a lot bigger than a lot of the other small sat launch vehicles. For comparison, Astra, which failed just a week ago, they are talking about less than 100 kilograms. So this is more than 10 times more powerful. Um, the rocket design has four first stage engines and these engines are called Reaver engines. And if you know the Firefly TV show, you might realize there are Reavers in that. And uh, yeah, these Reavers also are, operate their engines in unshielded mode. <laughs> they use something called the combustion tap-off cycle. That's where instead of having a dedicated gas generator to generate you know, gas to power your turbo pumps, they just take a pipe from the main combustion chamber and cool that gas before passing that through their turbines and to generate their pumps. And this, in theory, means you can eliminate the gas generator, simplify your rocket, and probably get better uh, thrust to mass ratio. Uh, as, as it happens, you know, that it's a very rare cycle. It's also used actually by Blue Origin on their new Shepard launch vehicle. The second stage, I think, is just a standard, uh, is another smaller version. But anyway, um, this was their first launch and it didn't go according to plan, unfortunately. Uh, one thing, by the way, that was interesting is that this is a small launch company and they collaborated with Tim Dodd, the early everyday astronaut, to you know host their stream. And this is all great. Tim does a great job. But unfortunately, the footage he got was not great. And I think that is just technical problems. Getting live footage out of Slick 2 is not necessarily easy because they're in the middle of an Air Force base and there aren't necessarily great cell tower support. Um, they actually use Slick 2 at Vandenberg, that Space Launch Complex 2. That used to be where the Delta 2s launched from and that retired back in 2018. And I was there for that launch my, and my car broke down. So I hope I haven't sort of left some bad karma or whatever on site. Um, but yeah, watching the stream, it was very hard to tell if anything was going wrong. Uh, and and it, it wasn't until we got a call much later than we expected saying that the vehicle was not yet supersonic. Not yet that, supersonic. That meant that it was underperforming significantly. And about two and a half minutes into the flight, it then took a sharp turn one way, a uh, sharp turn the other way and turned into a fireball. And you couldn't really tell what was going on from Tim's stream, uh, which was the official stream. And we've had to sort of resort to other people you know, with better cameras, uh, with using material that was recorded after the fact. And so I think the most obvious, uh, the, the, you know, the biggest smoking gun comes from the team at NASA Space Flight. We've got Michael Baylor, who had a sort of wide context shot, and Jack Baer, who had an amazing close-up of the whole thing. So if you watch their video, um, first thing you can see is about 15 seconds after the launch, 25 seconds into their video, there is a puff of flame from the bottom of the rocket. And I'm pretty sure that indicates an engine failure of some sort and one of the four engines shutting down. Now, if you look at the wider context shot and you're a nerd, you can actually do pixel counting. And I put this spreadsheet together that seems to show that after that engine shuts or that flare, the acceleration drops off. You may be zero, maybe even negative, and that's not good. So I think at that point, the team knew that they were in trouble and they were basically, once again, flying a rocket and trying to keep it flying as long as possible so they could move it beyond the base, beyond the place where uh, there may be people, and also burn as much propellant as possible before they inevitably had to you know, give up on the launch and terminate it. That's what I think happened. So the Firefly Alpha uses... It has four engines and the thrust vectoring, the gimballing, is single axis on each of these engines. You can see that they sort of move along a tangent to the side of the rocket. This is very similar to the Ariane 1 through 4, which had a similar thing. So if you lose one engine, 
you're actually losing a significant amount of your control capability and on top of it, you're now trying to correct for this off-center thrust. So now the next thing is that when you hit transonic speeds, finally after a long time, transonics, that's where your aerodynamics can get really wacky and you can have some you know, lateral forces that may exceed the abilities of these uh, diminished engines to correct for this and that's when it lost control. And so I think that's basically what happened. We have an engine failure followed by breakup at transonic speeds. So uh, another interesting thing from Jack's footage is if you follow the you know, flip through, then you can actually see the explosion start in multiple places. So this is a flight termination system that was triggered from the ground. And indeed, Space Force Delta 30 put out a statement basically saying that they destroyed the rocket. So this was a, somebody pushed the button, the thing exploded. Before the explosion happened, however, during that first turn, there is uh, footage from ground, the ground near Lompoc, which is near Vandenberg. And you can actually see the fairing tear off, probably along with the payload. So there were live payloads on this. They were operating this as a cut price launch solution. I, and maybe they were even donating it. I don't know. But um, yeah, if you had a satellite on there, I'm sorry for your loss, but take some comfort in the fact that your baby didn't die in a fireball, but instead just fell. You know, because, you know, no one likes to burn to death, right? Yeah, um, the same footage from you know, Ocean Avenue, I believe, near, near Vandenberg, also showed some fairly substantial chunks of debris landing near them. There's one piece which is very obviously an engine section landing on the ground you know, very close to the people. Uh, there's another section which I think might be a part of a fairing, and a lot of, a lot of the viewers actually ran over and picked it up. Don't pick up pieces of rocket debris, you know, seriously. Sometimes you, you might have just ruined some evidence. I think according to, uh, according to official statements, areas are now closed as they are recovering debris. They don't want people to touch stuff. Presumably the heavy stuff is going to land closer to the base, so they might actually be able to recover sections of the engine to figure out what went wrong. They may already have telemetry, which shows them what went wrong. Yeah, those engines fired for 15 seconds and they've done test firings previously. There's, um, there is, they actually published one and I think it was only 15 seconds. So maybe the, the engines only worked for 15 seconds. I doubt it. Look, you know, you don't get this far without knowing that you can burn your engines for full duration. Um, another bit of footage I looked at was just like somebody with a cell phone camera up in Pismo Beach. And you're sure, cell phone cameras don't really offer great zoom, but the great thing they do offer is wide angles. And I could measure the sort of relevant height of the foreground objects, estimate their distance and figure out that they got the rocket up to about 50,000 feet, which is you know, appreciable, but it was a long way short of what Astra managed and definitely a long way from space. So yeah, that's Firefly's debut launch. It's unfortunate that it didn't go off according to plan. I hope that they will be back. They have a whole bunch of other launches already on their calendar. Uh, and I hope they, we, we find out exactly what went wrong because I'd love to know more about these things. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.